it is. One play for it all. Snap to John. John backpedals. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. He's moving to his left. Shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. All kinds of time. Now the heat comes. He's got to run to the right. John Beck is on the run. He throws behind him. It is. Cut for the touchdown! Cut for the touchdown! Cut for the touchdown! Johnny Harley got it for the score! Harley by himself in the end zone! The Cougars win it! On the final play of the game! Can you believe this? That play took 3.2 seconds off the clock, but an eternity in the hearts and minds of Cougar fans everywhere. Johnny Harleen by himself, and John Beck with a throwback to find him. The play of the year, the play of their careers. So we were going for Good. a dramatic spin. Could watch that all day. To welcome everybody back. I got back. goosebumps. <laughs> Hopefully it worked. <laughs> Welcome back to BYU Sports Station, live from Studio B. We're in the Cougar Council Room as we continue our two-hour special of spring scrimmage and Alumni Day buildup. We welcome in the two men that were the highlight of that iconic, historic play, John Beck and Johnny Harleen. Wow. What's up, dude? John, you were just saying, as you're watching, you're like, <laughs> I remember my view. I, I remember what it looked like through the helmet. Yeah, yeah. I do. It's well, crazy because how many, like, that's what, 17 years ago? It's crazy. And it's been uh, that's crazy, but I do remember that whole. I remember seeing this dude just as I'm like running and I kind of peek to see how much space do I have. I just remember seeing this white jersey like, oh my gosh, if he clears that last guy, he's there. So glad he did that. <laughs> I, I used to text him all the time, thank you for running that direction. <laughs> like years later, it's well, totally opposite. And yeah. it's against the rule yeah. of what you do in the scramble drill, right? And so yeah. we, you always flow with the quarterback, but I got behind, I'm like, there's enough guys over there. But if you see in the play, you also see me coming across the middle and I'm in the middle of like five guys and I like wave my hands up like, I'm glad he waited because I was, that probably wouldn't have worked out. I was not open <laughs> at that point. I just but, remember um, feeling this red, I, I could see the last red jersey. Johnny, like, as you see it, there like, I, I don't see own. Johnny right there. I see him right there. Mm. And then I see this last red jersey, like he has no idea that Johnny went behind him and is standing there. And if that guy keeps going, oh my gosh, we got it. But then, like, I remember when I got hit, when I threw it, my, like, legs came up and I, I couldn't see the goal line. And I just saw him go to his knees. And for a split second, I thought, if he is on his knees on the one, like, what? <laughs> did, did Too much like, awareness for that. I would, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you said I was never going to drop it. You've told us that before. I was never no, going I, to I drop didn't, it. No, I wasn't too nervous about it. I mean, watching it, I'm more like, that was a moment <laughs> like but when you're in the game it's a little you know you're a little bit more focused on yep. it's like there's a ball it's coming to me I've done it a thousand times and uh, I knew where I was too if I would come out of the end zone I would have just reached down it's more safe probably to catch it like that so if I was in the end zone I knew I could do that but uh, I think uh, <laughs> I think I had it in good hands the, and, the whole and, way and so. you had one of your best games if not your best game ever because that was your third touchdown catch. You had had a long touchdown catch in the first half going oh, yeah. the other way. And yes. then you had had the one-hander on Weddle. That, and that's Thank like, you. Weddle. That I know, Thank was, you for pointing that, that out. That I want to make, make sure everyone yeah, that was. Okay. Well, that's what we kind of talked about. Like, he's like, isn't it funny that the catch that's remembered the most was just the one that floated right to my chest? But probably the most amazing one, maybe, of his entire career was the one that he tapped back to himself. And I remember I'm standing next to Weddle during the timeout. And like, he's like, John, there's no way that's a completion. And I'm like, dude, that's a completion. And like, they're playing it on the board and me and Weddle are literally standing there. <laughs> no, like that's a completion. And like, it was just, it's crazy. Cause like when you see it in slow-mo, the athleticism to be able to like, you know, you're, you have Weddle, right? Who's, who's a fantastic player, top defensive player of the conference. He's been a Pro Bowl player in the NFL. You tap it to yourself and you land in bounds. I mean, it's just, it was remarkable. I was super, super lucky to have a guy like this. I'm throwing the ball to. There was one overthrow that went out of bounds and one of our camera guys named John Anderson, who was working for the mountain, the lens snapped off the camera in the process of one of these plays and he got knocked over and Spencer and I are on the sideline as students like you guys at the time, uh, but you're playing football, we're just watching. And I'm like, no one's helping John up. I'm like, are you okay, John? This is like in the midst of BYU, Utah. Help him up and he was, he was okay. I was like, is no one gonna help the old guy up? <laughs> I'll be the guy. But anyways, uh, there, were, there were a million things there. Um, you know, you're left a buck 15 at the end. They score too yeah. early. Um, and you go 75 yards. You have a fourth down conversion on that. Did you run the same play back to back, by the way, on that last one? 
Did Robert call? No. No. Okay, no, we came back to the end. sideline, and uh, the play call was actually uh, ace flip 59. And which was the scissors concept. And we thought that if we get cover zero, we're going to probably, you know, take, take a shot to Zach calling in the back of the end zone because we anticipated they're either going to bring the house or they're going to drop everybody. And we kind of learned a little bit of lesson from the year before that Kyle liked to throw wrinkles on us. Like he did it the year before with this like circus defense that he called it. But Johnny, like you kind of see a clip, I think, I can't remember if it's like in the mountain version or whatever. Like you see Johnny come to me kind of like it was as we broke the huddle or as we were taking the field because yeah. it was a timeout. And as we were jogging out to the field, he comes to me and says, hey, you know, like, what do you want me to do uh, if we don't get zero? Because I was also potentially, depending on who covered him, I could take another fade to him, which yeah. we had done before that. And I'm like, look, if I don't take the shot on you on the fade, you got to find a way to get open. And I mean, by no means was I running around trying to find Johnny. It just, it worked out that way. And it was cool for us because I think we completed so many balls during our career together. We had so many big games together, but it was awesome to kind of have it all go together in that moment for it to be this guy. Turned out very poetic. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> well, listen, one of your beloved brethren in the BYU alumni base, Brian Keel, catches a Hail Mary. I know, his was bigger. Game. His play <laughs> might be bigger. He's, <laughs> he's, he's going to tell you, like, look, that's right up there. I know, because that's now known as the alumni Mira Keel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. The Mira Keel. <laughs> the alumni Mira Keel. We're going to redo the top 100 plays in BYU history, and we'll put that one at, like, 72. <laughs> I know, I came up with that, so like, I thought it was pretty good. good. I thought it was pretty good. Trademark when, I, when I found out Brian kept the football, I'm like, this is a big moment in Brian's life. It needs a Name. The <laughs> alumni hey, Miracle. <laughs> That's years fantastic. That, here, <laughs> here to four after uh, is the Miracle. That's awesome. Okay, let's stay with the alumni theme. What's it like for you guys to come back and be around all these guys? Because this event is now becoming bigger. You know, from year one to year two, it's, it's become much bigger. So, what's it like for you guys? I'll let Johnny go first. Uh, it's really cool. I mean, just coming in to meet guys that you've seen play, and you, you know, you meet guys here and there along the years, but. Um, you know, you meet some people that you never really have before, and to come in and, oh, I recognize this name from growing up, and it's, it's so cool to kind of all be on a more similar level. Um, you know, we had, like, I would always call him Coach Doman, and now I'm like, hey, Brandon, you know, when I see him, and so it's alumni, family, um, love coming back and feeling a I guess I, I kind of feel like in the middle of old. Like I, I want to claim that I'm old. We just turn, I just turned 40, but then I'm like, well, there's guys that I watched, you know, that I was eating breakfast with, and and then there's guys a lot younger than me. It's just, it's just really cool. And, you, and you're in Vegas and still shredding on guitar. You're in a band. Yeah, yeah. Um, What's the band name? We are Tiger Frog. Ooh. We wanted a name that didn't mean anything. <laughs> You so. found it. <laughs> you found it. <laughs> and uh, not trying too hard, but uh, we actually, yeah, that we should, you know, coincidentally, I didn't plan it out this way, but uh, should have a few songs streaming uh, this weekend. Nice. Let's go. So on all the streaming services. Did you so. t did you watch Parks and Rec at all? Yeah, yeah. Mouse yeah. Rap. You know, yeah. Uh, hey, that's <laughs> tiger. It's very it's animal similar. Two animals. Yeah. I think I think if there's any meaning at all, you got like you got the intensity fieriness of the tiger and the chill relaxness of the frog okay. right which is you know we do we could call that a little <laughs> bit of the uh you know the inspiration we got some you know pump up songs and then some relaxed songs so you can years, I, for years, I tried to get BYU to let Johnny play the national anthem. I still want it. I tried so hard. There's like, there's actually a lot of stuff going on behind it of like reasons why they couldn't. But I'd be like, they would invite me back for like a game, and I'd be like, I'll come back if you guys let Johnny play the national anthem <laughs> on guitar. And like, I, I would call Duff Tittle, like Duff, you gotta get this to happen, bro. Like, this would be epic. Johnny out there shredding, you know. Like, yes. oh. anyway. And then the jet flyover oh. would have to happen at the end. Yes. And my goodness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, one can dream. Hey, yeah. what's Dave this? Dave McCann's having a brain aneurysm thinking about how awesome that would <laughs> yeah, be. He right is now. the flyover guy, yeah. so yeah, but we the can bring, guitar we and can bring the, that up yeah, to him for awesome. sure. So we can't do that? Is that what you're saying? It's not. There's, there, yeah, there's like, there's a lot of oh. things they can, yeah. Cincinnati, Friday night, first home game against the club. That would be the perfect thing. I mean, I think I'd rather it have been when this guy got inducted into the Hall of Fame if it could have been that night. That would have been way rad. That would have been epic. And now you're inductee into the Hall of Fame, Johnny Harleen. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, John, let's, uh, let's talk Keaton Slovis. You, had, you, you played an instrumental role in just opening his eyes more to Provo and to BYU 
And this, I mean, this goes back to, you didn't tell me his name at the time. We're talking on the sideline of Stanford, and you're like, there's a dude, Spencer. Oh, yeah, that's there's, right. There's a, there's that a dude. That was him. That there's, was him. There's a dude. Uh, he's now here. And um, Kalani's like, it feels like he's been here for four years. What is it about Keaton Slovis that's going to make this transition so smooth? Uh, experience, number one. Uh, the person that he is as well. Like, that... Like, that's the big thing that, like, to me, when I felt like, okay, I'm going to do this. Like, I'm going to bring up BYU to Keaton. Like, he and I were having discussions. And I remember where I was sitting. I was sitting in my garage, uh, and Keaton and I were going through the list of schools that he was potentially looking at. And he'd gone through the list, and I remember just having this feeling like, I feel like BYU could be a great spot. But if I'm going to put that out there, I really want to know that it can be a great spot for him. Um, and I just think Keaton's personality, the type of like human being that he is, the type of person he is with his teammates, he's such an easygoing yet like focused, determined. Like he just has a good balance of things. And I also like, look, I'm a believer that like sometimes when the road has this little downturn, the swing back up can be great. I just I believe in those stories. Mm -hmm. And I was with Keaton. I watched him come out as a freshman and ball out at, at SC. And then I watched an arm injury, trying to go through the recovery process his battle back from that, a back injury, like all these things. And I'm like, he's right there ready for this swing back up. And, you know, I mean, sometimes the, you can say things happen for a reason. Sometimes, you know, just happenstance. But, like, this feels so right that yeah. Keaton's the guy here right now. And when I see him at practice, I just think, like, it does feel like he's been here for a number of years. And when I talk to him afterwards, he's like, he's happy. He loves it here. He's got great teammates, great friends. And, uh, like, to me, that's why I'm like, this has been great so far. Because I, th I think as good as it could have been, that's what's happened. So you many know. cool connections, but obviously the connection of quarterbacks working with you has been awesome. And then we have another dude from the uh, Valley of the Sun. Let's go. You and right. Max. Arizona. Arizona. Yeah, I know. Back. Arizona guy. I know. Right? I, 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 the school that he went to, I actually played against them in high school. Mm. Uh, and so it's kind of, you know, it is funny. Like, I'm always aware of the quarterbacks that come out of Arizona just because, like, it's cool to see a guy come from your home state. And so when Keaton was playing at SC, like, this is awesome, an Arizona kid coming over here. You know, little do you know, five years later, four years later, <laughs> he's going to be here. He's going to be BYU. And, and he even and said you're that. you're going to be a huge reason for that. He even Kurt said he's Warner like, was uh, his, what, OC Yeah, he, or like, helped out. Yeah, yeah, he helped out. But I, I remember when I first started talking to Keaton, and this was really happening, he was going to make the commitment. He's like, I never would have thought that day that I played my first road game as a college player. Wild. I would be now back in that stadium as a starting quarterback. Into yeah. the Big 12, like in this yeah, huge moment for BYU. That's wild. Yeah, yeah, it is cool. Great stuff. Now he just needs a Johnny Harleen, and maybe it's Isaac Rex. And, uh, all, all Absolutely well. could okay. be that. Let's Absolutely. go. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us, guys. Great to have yeah. you back for Alumni Thank Day you. and for the spring scrimmage. Okay, good to see it. Let's recreate that today, by the way. Maybe? <laughs> do you know how many people have asked me? They're like, hey, <laughs> we're, like, are we going to do that? You're like, it's hard to overcome a, a miracle. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but we'll see <laughs> what happens.